Welcome back to Fusion 360 for Woodworkers. We're continuing our bookcase build and today I want to turn our attention to the second drawer. And we're going to use the copy, the paste and the mirror command to quickly create the drawer using the first one as our template. That sounds good. Stick around. So now's the time to build the second drawer, the larger drawer. Last time around we built the small drawer, we cut out the dovetails, we measured everything out and we used a variety of commands to create the first drawer structure. I now want to steal some components from that, the end panels, and I want to mirror the front and back to accelerate and quickly create the larger drawer without having to recut all the joinery. So let's get straight into it and have a look how we're going to do that. So this is where we got to last time, we've got this drawer that now slides in and out and is all glued together and looking pretty beautiful. And today I want to create this drawer here. Now the first thing that we need to do is just to give this a reference point to work from. And what we did here on the smaller drawer was created this front panel and that's the one that resizes, then everything takes its dimensions from that front panel. And our first step is the same, we're going to sketch the front panel on this drawer we're going to constrain that to the size of its opening so when the opening resizes the panel resizes so let's get that job done first of all remember we come up to the sketch tool and i want to sketch on the very very front of my bookcase so just select that plane now it's saying to me look something's changed in your diagram here do you want to capture the position if i were to capture that position it's this draw here that's changed it's now stuck out and if I say capture the position, that will always be the new position of that draw. So I don't actually want to do that. So I'm going to say no and cast out of that. And I'm going to come up to this position tool here and I'm going to say revert. Now that's put that draw back into its hole and that's where I want it to live. So with that put back into its space, I can now come in, select my create sketch tool, select that plane. And this time you see I don't get that warning because everything's back where it should be. Good. Come into your two point rectangle, click on that and just draw a random rectangle that's smaller than the opening. And you can see it's blue so it's not constrained. Escape to come out of this uh, rectangle tool. I then want to come in and use our old friend the collinear tool and I want to use that to constrain this rectangle to the opening of the drawer. Select the top one to the top one. Side to the side, bottom to the bottom left to the left. So we've now got a draw front that's exactly the same as the opening. I can now finish my sketch. I want to extrude this, so select it and come up for the extrude tool. And we know we want to push that into the draw, oops, into the draw by an amount, and that amount is minus the stock thickness. But I don't want to join, I want a new component. New component, okay. We can now rename that new component, and that new component is going to be called Large Draw Front. Happy days! So we've now got a large draw front. Now we know it's too big because that's going to be the tight fit, and remember we offset the small one by 0.5 millimeters on this side, the top, and this side. So we'll do the same here. I'm going to right click on the large draw front and come all the way down and I'm going to isolate that so I can work on it. I'm now going to come in to the modify and the offset faces and we're going to offset the top face, that side and that side and I think we offset that by minus 0.5 millimeters. Okay. Right click on large draw, and unisolate, and that's it. That's now giving me the perfect size that I want with that gap all the way around. Now I just want to work on the large draw and the small draw because I want to steal the components from the small draw and reuse them on the large draw. So I'm going to select the small draw on my menu, I'm going to hold shift down, and I'm going to select the large draw. I'm going to right click and I'm going to use the isolate command to turn everything else off. Now the two components I want to steal are these side panels that's got all my dovetail joinery on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of this side panel. Select the component on our small drawer and I can right click on it and say copy. 
paste. And I've now got that component made. And you can see it's shortcut and I can just drag that over here. So this component now has made a new component down here called draw side right, which is, sounds pretty good to me. Cool. And then okay, that's. Now I want to move this so it connects to this panel here. Now this is where we're going to use the joint. Positions components relative to one another and defines the relative motion. Yep, we looked at that last time. So that the geometry or joint origins to define the joint and specify the type to define the motion. Great. Now what that's not telling you is it actually moves components together. So this will move this side panel in relation to this front panel. So this will slide in and it will make the appropriate joint. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Assemble, joint. Now, look what it's saying to me. It's saying what you want to do. Well, the mode is simple or it's between two faces or it's two edge intersection. Simple just connects two origins on a face, edge or point together. Between two faces will actually create that between two faces. So I select two edges and I put it in the middle of those two edges. And then two edge intersection will extract two lines out to a common point and it will intersect at that point. So we just want to come in a very, very simple mode. What do I want to do? Well, I want to select this here. And you can see that component. When I hover over the face, it gives me a whole host of different selections which is fantastic. And those selections are always midpoints or endpoints. So you can see on this face here, it's giving me one here, the top right, sorry, the top left, top right, one in the center of that line, one in the center. And as you can see, my little cursor changes depending on which one I'm selecting. So it makes sense to me that we use this piece here. We use this back point here. Now it's saying, what do you want to connect to? Well, I want to snap to this point here on this front edge. So I'm going to click this and watch the animation. Sorry, select that point there. And it slides it into place. And look at that, it's now put that to that point. Now, can anybody see the immediate problem? It's connected the edge of that board to the front edge here or to this corner. So my dovetails have come all the way through. And on the small drawer, remember, we had an offset. But that's okay, because I can offset this. I want to slide this back by whatever that offset was. And you can see that's a Y offset. You can see that number in the Y offset changing. That was three millimeters. So if I just come here and type three millimeters and then click okay, there you go. That's now created a glue joint for me that's brought that component in and offset it by the three millimeters to give me those blind dovetails. Rather elegant, eh? Let's do the same with the other end. So I now want to come in with this panel, which is in the small drawer assembly, and it's this drawer side left. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to press copy, and then I'm just going to click into free space and right click and paste. And I'm just going to drag that out of the way. Okay. So I've now got this copy here. So I'm going to turn off the small drawer because I no longer need it. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use a joint command to bring it into position and offset it and glue it to this component. So assemble, joint command. It's a simple component that I want to do. Select the point, that top corner there. I want to connect to that top corner there. There it goes. But I want to slide it back by three millimeters. Okay, so that will now make that life a lot easier for us. So what I now want to be able to do is to say, so I want a mirror component. So I want to take this front component here and mirror it to this back. So I'm going to find a midpoint, but my midpoint is not going to be the length of this panel, because remember it's shorter on this end by three millimeters. It's going to be from this front face here to this back face of the panel. So I'm just going to use the mirror command. Now, when you're using a mirror command, it wants to know what you want to mirror, which is going to be this front component, and what you want to mirror it around. Well, that's going to be a center point of my draw. So let's create the center point first of all. Construction plane. 
mid plane. Create a construction plane at the midpoint between two faces or work planes. Fantastic. So I want to go from the front of that drawer to what I know will be the back of the drawer, one of those dovetail faces. And that's now created that midpoint, which is the middle of the drawer, not in the middle of that panel, which is pretty good. Okay. I can now come in and create, and I can create a mirror. So, what do you want to mirror? Well, I want to mirror components, and it's this front face I want to mirror, and I want to mirror around the midpoint. And now that's perfectly put in there, a mirror of that front panel, and I can select OK. So that's looking really, really quite good. Our drawer is coming together nicely. Just going to turn off this midpoint plane. Never delete that midpoint plane. If you do that, your parametric model won't work. In. So into construction, turn off the last plane that we did. Okay. And now let's put the joinery in this front panel and this back panel. And we've done this before. It was the combined tool, our router tool. So let's select that. What do I want to cut? Well, the front panel. What do I want to cut it with? My two bodies, this panel and this panel. I want to cut, but I want to keep those tools. Bang. My joinery is now in place. Right click, repeat combine. This panel, this panel, and this panel. Okay. So I've now got all my um, joinery in place. You can see I've got everything needed. And that's a super quick way of creating a drawer. So we've stolen the components off this drawer and made a large drawer, and it's all pretty much glued together. We need to put a base in place, but we know how to do that. We use exactly the same technique to put this base in place. So let's have a look at that. So we're gonna come into the Create Sketch. We're gonna come so we draw on the very, very base of the drawer, so we've got a reference point. And we're just going to sketch in here any old square, and that's unconstrained. I'm now going to use collinear. I'm going to do that to that, that to that, that to that, and that to that. So we now have a base in a drawer that's exactly the same size as the opening, and always will be because we've constrained it. So as the drawer resizes, the base resizes, finish that sketch. We now want to extrude this up, and remember what we did. We extruded by 10 millimeters to give me this offset here at the bottom, and we also extruded by the thickness of the base that we set a parameter up for called drawer bottom, I think, from memory. And then we extruded back up by 10 millimeters to allow for that offset. And then we know that's always going to reference from the base, will always be the right size, and will always be 10 millimeters from the bottom of the drawer. So let's look at that process then. We highlight this. I come into extrude. I push it up. And we push this up by the drawer bottom plus 10 millimeters. So you can see that's remembered it for me. And we know that it was going to be a new component. Okay. So let's give it a name so we can remember what we're working on. This is now the large draw bottom. Beautiful. And now it's two, 10 millimeters too deep. We need to push it back up this 10 millimeters here. So collect that face, extrude, push up by minus 10, and make sure we cut it because I don't want it anymore. There you go. So that's now put the draw bottom in the right place. Now we do know that it's the wrong size because it's just a small bottom and we need to allow it to stick in by, I think it was six millimeters, a third of the stock thickness or joinery command that we have. So let's right click on large draw bottom and let's isolate that. And let's use our friend the modify offset face command. I want to offset that face, that face, that face and that face which is looking good. And I want to offset that coming out by joinery, which we know was a stock thickness divided by three. So I can now pull these things back in place here. And the final thing to do, obviously, is just put the rebates in the front and the back. They already exist in the side because they were copies. We're gonna use the combine command again. The target body is the front drawer and my tool body is the bottom drawer. Okay. 
and then right click and repeat combine and my target body is now the back and my tool body is the base again cut and keep okay so I now hide the draw bottom that's it that's in place excellent stuff so I'll turn on my little drawers again and on isolate I think uh, everything yep these back together you can now see we've got our draw in place now you can see we've not glued this so parts of it are glued from that join we made when we moved it but the back and the base aren't yet glued in so now let's use our glue command I'm going to actually put this together now as a sub assembly so I'm going to right click on the bookcase design and I'm going to create a new component and the menu's actually changed this has been updated as we've been doing this course so it gives you this menu now it used to just drop the component down inside here but this now gives you more to go at so it's a standard component, there's a selection now, sheet metal or standard, well, just standard. Is it external or internal? And that's talking about the component that's currently highlighted. Now my active component is all of the bookcase, so that's internal. What's the name? Well, we're going to call this one large um, draw. Da, 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 da. Um, don't worry about the bodies of the parents and make it active okay so that's now going to drop a component in here that's now active so now what I want to do is to take those large draw components left click shift to highlight multiple objects and I want to move that into position and look it's giving me this warning again don't want to capture the position so I want to straight away come out of that because I've changed something I want to come to my position and I want to revert I'm not sure what it was I changed. I think it's when I dragged this front drawer around that it may have picked that up. Now come back in again, large drawer, sides, front, bottoms, backs, and drop them into that component. That's better. So there's no error this time, and now I've simplified that. Okay, so I now want to glue these together. So I can now click on the large drawer, I can isolate that and we can use the joint command to glue these back panels and the base to the assembly they're in the right position so i can use the as built joint we know we want a rigid joint so i want the back and that side okay um oops a daisy not sure what that was and i want to repeat as built joint so the back and this side okay these are already glued together so we're okay uh, as built and now it's the base and it's the front base and I can't pick up the front panel there you go, front panel ok and now I can unisolate this to bring everything back in so you now can see that my drawer is all together happily but it's not working, it's not sliding in and out so I now want to constrain it to this base here so position, revert Let's give it a dimension, sorry, let's give it a path now. So assemble, as built joint. This time we want a sliding joint. My components are this front face and this bottom edge. And my position is going to be down this bottom corner here. With the arrow sticking out, ideally. Okay, so you can see I picked up the wrong plane, but that's okay because I can change my sliding axis to, I think it's Z. Animation, no, it wasn't Z. X, no, Y, yes, <laughs> we get there in the end. So we change my animation to Y, and that's now good. And you can see that this draw will now slide in and out as well. Position, revert back to a closed draw. So there you go, a really neat technique for creating that second drawer. In the next episode, we're going to look at the remaining three drawers, and we're going to be using the copy and paste command to copy and paste the entire drawer unit. And then we'll be using the joint command one time only to bring it all into position and set the motion paths that we need. I'll see you next time.